In our last episode, we explored the headquarters for AMS, Atomic Mining Services, and discovered a few things about what happened at Welch. We learned from the CEO's terminal that what happened was kind of an accident. They didn't destroy Welch to get at some resources. No, one of their shafts, mining shaft number 9, exploded into the town of Welch. We also learned that no one at AMS knew how Ultrasight was formed. This explosion in mineshaft number 9 came as a bit of a surprise because they had already explored mineshaft number 9 and at the time didn't find any Ultrasight. It's almost as if the Ultrasight spontaneously emerged in the shaft, which caused the explosion into Welch. Now, we can head to Welch to see this destruction firsthand. As we approach from the west, we see the buildings of Welch peeking out from a hillside where smoke rises. As we get closer, we see 83 North move into Welch, but the road is totally destroyed. There's a ruined bus outside, and it's covered in graffiti. Block the bot. Jobs now or else. And we find protest signs. With the road destroyed, we have to find another way into this town. The explosion appears to have caused some sort of landslide. We see many of these buildings in pieces and partially buried. While trying to find a gap in this ruin to access the town, we discover the town of Welch. The earth beneath some of these houses appears to have given way. Half of the house is resting firmly on ground, the other half is just gone. But as we approached Welch, we started a miscellaneous quest, Find Duchess's Stash. Nearby, at the bottom of the hill here, we find a ruined house with a mailbox outside labeled Z. Wilson. And it's here where we find Strikebreaker robots. So the National Guard was eventually deployed here to Welch. Heading inside Z. Wilson's house, we see that it too has been practically cut in half. We can hop down to the lower level and then through a hole in this floor to the bottom level. Here we find Duchess's stash and it's filled with an assortment of chems. Looting it completes the miscellaneous quest, but who's Duchess and why did she have so many chems? Near to Duchess's house, we find that the landslide has unearthed a coffin part of which is sticking out of the ground, which is now hanging over the remains of Duchess's house. Inside the coffin, we find a skeleton and a holotape. Eviction notice recording, the Kaminskys. Mr. and Mrs. Armin Kaminsky, this is your final warning. Your domicile is situated on top of AMS property. You have 15 seconds to exit your home. If you do not do so, my men and I are well within our rights to remove you by force. Don't think they're coming out, boys. Sir, this does not concern you. Please step back. You company boys take our jobs, take our dignity. Now you want our homes too? Yeah, I'd say it concerns me plenty. Sir, I'm going to ask you one more time. Get back in your house. The only people in trouble are the Kaminskys. For now. That's where you're wrong, son. The skeleton has a crowbar lodged in its ribcage. The story, I think, becomes clear. Before the mineshaft exploded into Welch, AMS sent their goons to Welch to try to evict the residents to gain access to the resources here. The people of Welch objected and murdered this guy by stabbing him in the ribcage with the iron bar. They then hastily buried him in a shallow grave in a wooden coffin right outside Duchess's house. But then when the mine shaft exploded, it caused a landslide in town, which then exposed the coffin, thus revealing the crime. But Amos didn't stop with this guy. We learn from a newspaper that we find at the Charleston Herald building that they continued to try to get people out of Welch. The article is titled, AMS Corporate Bully. Atomic Mining Services is a relatively new company in Appalachia, but its practices should be familiar to anyone who knows a little West Virginian history. Reports of armed teams of security personnel used to disperse rioters and labor protests has been almost a daily occurrence that this newspaper has reported on. 
we are sorry to say that a new low has been reached. When AMS first came to West Virginia, they were lauded as saviors to the region, bringing a new method of digging even deeper into the old mines. The fact that these methods included detonating atomic charges didn't phase the hardened mining communities who were used to the kind of risks common in coal country. But AMS abandoned the project almost as soon as they arrived, citing technical failures. Employment dried up again. The area lurched even deeper into poverty. You would think that would be enough damage, but AMS wasn't done. Like thieves in the night, AMS suddenly swooped into the town of Welch, claiming that they had the resource rights to the land, including the residences the people of Welch were living on. Naturally, the town resisted this attempt to take away their homes, and that's when AMS's now infamous security personnel came in. Why does AMS want Welch? AMS has provided no comment, and our reporters were escorted out of the town by armed men wearing AMS logos. Welch lied directly on top of Mineshaft No. 9, which AMS thought had Ultrasite, and so they tried to kick everyone out of Welch so that they could secure the mineral resources. But upon inspecting Mineshaft No. 9, they didn't find any, until sometime later, it spontaneously appeared, exploding, perhaps coming into contact with depleted Ultrasite, which as we learned when we explored the AMS headquarters, causes an explosion when it comes into contact with non-depleted Ultrasite, destroying the town of Welch. Traveling east up the hillside, we arrive at what at one time was a road traveling between rows of houses. These houses are all ruined but connected to each other with catwalks and ladders. These ruins are occupied by mole miners, dozens of them, and we spend a great deal of time getting rid of them all. We climb a staircase on a ruined house with a green propane tank behind it. We find a console with a randomized mod inside. On top of this is a footlocker, and beneath it is an ammo canister. Then crossing the street from here, we find a skeleton in a bathtub with a snub-nosed 44 caliber pistol holding a sign, I want to work. Nearby we find a stim pack on a dresser with some picture frames. Behind this house, off to the southwest, is a makeshift graveyard. None of these have headstones, and it seems like a strange place for a graveyard. Perhaps this is where the townspeople of Welch buried the townsfolk who resisted AMS when AMS arrived. Or perhaps this is where the townspeople buried those who died during the explosion, and they had to create this graveyard quickly. In one of the houses, we find a bunch of food, a pumpkin pie on a table, a toilet under a stairs, which is weird, and canned food on a shelf. Heading upstairs, before Wild Appalachia, we would have found a bed next to a table with a magazine inside that we can't loot. But after the Wild Appalachia update, we find the bed gone, and in place of it, a terminal on a desk next to a skeleton in a wheelchair. Accessing the terminal, we read, Always Seek the Truth, JHP. In the first Laura Gone Day 5, Laura has been gone on a supply run for over five days. This has never happened before. I've tried to work up the courage to make my way down the stairs, but what good would that do? Where would I even go? I'm thankful for the whiskey I had stashed away, but there's no food up here. Please be safe, Laura. In the next one, Laura Gone Day 12, I'm starting to see things. People. I watched our wedding ceremony play out right here in the study. I keep experiencing visitors walking up the stairs. Mike, Glenn, Scott, Jerry, Cal, Andrew, Sean, Artie. Ran out of whiskey. Shared the last glass with a sheep squatch to bury the hatchet. I always knew it wasn't personal. I just got too close. I hear Laura humming downstairs. That means she's cooking. Smell delicious. In the next, Laura gone day 16. Had another visitor. Felt so real. His face was wrapped in bandages, but I knew that voice. Didn't think I'd see him so soon. Figure he already left town. Again. He brought another bottle from downstairs. Very thoughtful. No food, though. He told me Laura isn't down there. I told him I know. Saw Grandma later that night, too. In the next one, Day 19. Clear thoughts, if only for a moment. I never could tell them it was real. I didn't want them to end up like me. Or worse? What's the point in finding out the truth? What did it get me? What did it prove? Why couldn't I just leave well enough alone? 
If I could still walk, if I never saw that damn thing, I'd be out there with Laura. We'd be surviving together. Laura, I'm sorry. Please, make it home safe. Why do I feel so cold now? And in the final one, Laura gone day 21. Seeing more and more visitors, feeling weaker and weaker too. I should crack open that last bottle and call it a night. I love you, Laura. Lying in the wheelchair, surrounded by empty booze bottles, are the remains of Ray Gary. He was one of the members of the Truth Seekers Cryptid Hunters, whom we first learned about at the beginning of the Lying Low questline, which I streamed live here on my channel. In those live streams, we learned the fates of the other two members, Calvin, savaged by the imposter Sheep Squatch, and Scoot Conroy, who broke his legs when exploring the sunken church in the mire. In a note that Conroy left in the sunken church, he told us that Ray Gary and his wife Laura had come here to Welch. Well, looks like we found him. We don't know whatever happened to Laura. Why did she never come back? Did she die out there? Or was it just too much to both survive and take care of Ray in this post-apocalypse? And so she just didn't come back. If we go out of this house and cross some makeshift scaffolding to the next one, we find a skeleton in the ruin upstairs, downstairs a chem box and a Nuka-Cola on a table, another bathroom under the stairs, and a recipe on the kitchen counter. I don't think this one is randomized. Every time I came here, I always found Delbert's sunshine oil. Heading towards the middle of town, we find more evidence of the National Guard and the Strike Breakers. We see ruined Protectrons in the middle of the street and blasted out vans. On the porch of a diner, we find a skeleton with a protest sign next to some Radaway, a Nuka-Cola cherry, and a cooler. There's an explosives crate in the back of a picker-up truck and an ammo box with a duffel bag in the back of one of the vans. Crossing McDowell Street, we find a chem box on one of the porches next to some psycho buff Man, there sure were a lot of chems here in town. And behind this shack, we find a cooler on a picnic table. In a ruined house nearby, we find a Nuka-Cola Quantum just lying by a toilet. And then heading towards the town center, we see two shops, a bakery and a gun shop. Here we find an explosives crate inside a cart next to a gold vein. On the other side of the bakery, we find a u it vending machine. Here we can purchase maps using caps that point to mounds that we can excavate. Each of these excavation sites will have a randomized assortment of ore. Going around behind the shops, we find a tool case and a blasted out sedan. Then behind the shops, we find a ladder leading to the roof. On the rooftop, we can loot one of the mole miners. And here we find a bit of a sniper's roost. There's an ammo box, some medex, and a number of pipe weapons. Directly across the street from the bakery is the post office. Inside, we find a selection of scrap and a skill-level two-locked box safe behind the counter next to a radio. Near to the post office, we find a boarded-up electrical shop. There's a weapons workbench out here and a randomized plan on a crate next to it. There's an ammo box near to the boarded-up door. The boarded-up door says keep out, and we see a colon and a P forming a sticky tongue-out face. Okay. Heading behind the electrical shop, we find a number of ore veins, a copper vein, a silver vein, and we see that even all these years later, mineshaft number nine is still on fire. Fire from the mineshaft is leaking up to the surface into the town of Welch. And it was here when every single mole miner in town decided to respawn. <laughs> With the mole miners dead, we can explore a final row of houses on the highest ledge of Welch. In one of the houses, we find a skill level two locked box safe and some addictal lying nearby. Using a rubble ramp, we can climb up to the balcony of a nearby house. The skeletons of the owners are pouring out of it, likely killed by this destroyed protectron nearby. We find more protest signs inside this house and Lying dead on the ground on the other side of an overturned table, we find a mistress of mystery. I explained exactly what she's doing here in my series on the mistresses of mystery that you can watch here. Lying next to her corpse is a Medex, a Nuka-Cola, and an ammo crate. Near to her, we find another randomized recipe on a kitchen counter. Moving out and exploring the house directly next to this one, we find a duffel bag, an ammo canister, a microphone, a hunting rifle, a police officer's hat, and a hollow tape, surveillance system tape, August 8th, 2077. 
it's Agent Danger today. Yes, ma'am. Agent Tornado's retired. Too much collateral damage during mission. Hmm, is that so? Yep, Mama said we can't play Agent Tornado anymore. She didn't say anything about Agent Danger. Well, aren't you a sharp cookie? That doesn't sound like a particularly good cookie, ma'am. <laughs> I suppose it doesn't. Now, to what do I owe the distinct pleasure? Mama said, go ask Miss Duchess if she can cop us two extra tabs of buff out. Gerald can't work without it, and she knows we're good for it. Mama sent you to do her begging? Yes, ma'am. Because she knows you're my one weakness in this world. Um, I guess so. Agent Danger, would you be willing to take a mission for me? I need three of the coldest, iciest nuka colors they got down at Wabash's. I gave you some money, would you be willing to go get them for me? One of them's got your name on it. Agent Danger can do that! That's my girl. Go quick and you can have Butch's too. <sighs> Butch? Yes, ma'am. Go pay Betty a visit. Let her know this is the last credit she's ever getting. I'll keep Agent Danger occupied while you make your point crystal clear. Yes, ma'am. So that's who Duchess was, the local drug dealer for Welch. That explains why we found so many chems scattered all over town. And it looks like the authorities were on to her. They recorded this conversation. I read that there's another note adding more color to this story, but I turned Welch over three or four times looking for it and I never found it. I then went to Twitter to ask for help, and after several followers spent many hours trying to find it in Welch, we all came up empty-handed, so I think this note must be cut content. However, the contents of the note can be extracted from the game files. Case Notes, Duchess Investigation. We've been monitoring the home of the criminal known as Duchess next door for about a week now and have one recording that might be enough to pull a warrant if Roberta Declan is willing to testify. However, I want to advise against that for now despite my partner's insistence. I think it's unlikely that she will cooperate and trying to lean on her now will just tip our hand. I've been leaving white X's on the mailboxes of the homes her goon Butch seems to visit the longest each day because despite our best efforts, we've been unable to verify her operation's safe house. Her home is undoubtedly spotless. She's a smart cookie. If her stash is hidden anywhere in Welch, it'll be one of those locations. Here's hoping that there's enough evidence there to send her away for good. This explains why the house where we found Duchess's stash had a mailbox that did indeed have a chalk X on it. The house right next to this one had a piece of X cell and some rad X in a tub. And moving east up the hill, we find even more ruins. These which look even more shattered. In one, we find a skill level one lock footlocker hiding under one of the beds. And on this same level, hiding behind some ductwork, we find a bobby pin box with a black teddy bear that we can't interact with and a skill level two locked floor safe. East up the road from here, we find a boarded up house with a weapons workbench and a tinkerer's workbench outside. And east up the road from here, we find some scorched guarding a house. Inside, we find the overseer's journal entry number five, and we learn that this home was Evan's home. I covered this holotape and the story of Evan in my video on the Overseer that you can watch here. And that's the final ruined home in the town of Welch. If we head northeast of Welch, we find Welch Station. This is the train station the people of Welch used to get to their various work sites each day. On the station porch, we find a coffin with a skeleton inside, and one of the engines is completely ruined, lying to the side of the tracks. Inside the station, we find a responder vendor bot, and on this guy, I found a plan for a lever rifle. Northeast of the station, crossing the tracks, we find a scrap pathway made with stairs and ramps leading up the hillside. Along the way, we pass a lot of graffiti, jobs, and a number of mineral veins. At the top of the hill, we find another ruined home. Inside, we find a stem pack and a box of bobby pins, and next to it, a skill level three locked box safe. Right next to this is a coffee shack. 
The workers likely came here to grab a cup of joe before heading to the work site. We find protest signs littering the place, and there's a cat that still lives here. We can find a candy Mr. Fuzzy on the ground, and in the kitchen we find a footlocker under the grill and a skill level one locked box safe. And that's it for Welch. Whatever happened inside mineshaft number nine clearly destroyed the town. But it looks like AMS was trying to boot the residents out of town even before the explosion happened. We better understand exactly why mine workers all over Appalachia were protesting its mining companies. Which brings up the question, where exactly were these protesters organizing their protests? We'll try to find that location and learn more about their means and motives in our next episode. I publish many videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.